Okay, we're we're back on air. Um, I think we we're on air for a minute here, and I didn't I didn't go to it. So let's just go to the slideshow because that works pretty well. Play from current slide. All right. Uh, of course, I don't like this slideshow at all. Hold on, I'm going to waste some more of your time here. Set up slideshow. I don't know why it doesn't stay. Um, so that I can punch the buttons down here. Otherwise, it doesn't do me. Current slide. All right, let's talk about the electric. First of all, real quick, we can do Coulomb's law in three dimensions, you know, because they are vectors. They create forces which are vectors. So we can add them. So if we wanted to um, figure out the total force that's acting on um, uh, Q1, say, all right, so it's got a force that's pulling it this way. It's got a it's got a force pulling it this way. The common you can compute this one, and then you can um, uh, compute this one and break this and break this force here into its uh, two components, as they've done here. So here's force of one caused by two. Um, so they've broken it down into its two components, and so you just add that and add that, you know, and and then you add this part. And what they've done is they've shown you graphically when you take the cross when you take the uh, uh, cross product, what happens <clears throat> in vectors. I like to stay in one dimension, so for for us because we got bigger fish to fry. We'll let the engineers mess with that kind of stuff. All right. They like to play the little sine cosine games, all right, which which is important. I mean, it's good. but now let's talk about the electric field, okay? So let's put a little positive charge out here. It's a little bitty positive charge. It's called a test charge, and it should really have a small magnitude, so it doesn't affect the other charges. In other words, it's so small that it's really not pulling. It's kind of like it's kind of like my calculator hovering above the Earth, okay? Does the gravitational field, because my calculator has mass, does it create any kind of force on the Earth? Earth? Heck no. All right. So here we are. So we got this. And so, you know, so we've got these negative charges. Now, if this is a positive. Now, notice they didn't make it negative. So I'm going to assume it's a positive charge. So I'm. it's right here. And so it's going to want to go this way. Because it's being pushed by this sphere, which has a bunch of positive charge, and it's being pushed and it's being pulled by this sphere. So it's going to create quite a strong force going this way. All right. And the test charge, 3.8, has a, has a magnitude. Let's say it has a magnitude of 3.8 times 10 to the negative 8 coulombs and experiences a force of 6.1 times 10 to the negative 8 newtons. Find the force per coulomb that the test charge experiences. Find the force per coulomb. Okay, so in other words, what we're going to do is we're going to find the electric field. So notice what they're doing. This force per coulomb, that is the electric field. Okay, all right. Predict the force that a charge of 12 times 10 to the negative 8. So you multiply the electric field by the charge. I got excited and jumped right into it. So let's take a look at what we're talking about here. Here's the big idea. Electric field. E field. Okay. There's the E field. Whenever you have a charge, here's a positive charge. You got E field coming out of it all over, everywhere. E field's coming, it just, just oozing, oozing out of it, okay? And then if I have a negative charge over here, ooh, it's got the E field comes in, is attracted to it. It's the E field, it's like eharmony.com, all right? Whoa, we got the, so, if I have a little bitty positive charge out here, it's going to go, whoa, it's going to cruise along the E field. If I have a little bitty negative charge out here and it and we let it go, it's going to go this way. All right? Towards, that's that's what the electric field is. Okay? Now, the equations for it are this. The E field is equal to, so if I take a bunch of charge, so, I, so let's say I've got a positive, 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 positive. 
this is a huge amount of positive charge here. Positive, 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 a little bit of negative. Okay, so I'm going to smoosh this down and say, all right, well, you marry up with that. You marry. So I'm going to have just one like big charge Q that's positive here that comes from here. All right. That, that's kind of what Gauss did. That's, that's a mathematical thing that we do to mess with. So I smash it down into this one big charge right here. And, and the E field that comes out away from it is equal to K times whatever that big charge is divided by R squared. So if I put a little bitty negative charge out here, so if I put a little bitty negative charge out here, well, so remember this equation put a little bitty negative charge at it, what happens? That Q goes, whoa, I want to go this way. Feels a force. And the force is equal to this. The force, well, I could write Coulomb's law. The force on that little bitty charge caused by the big charge, I could write Coulomb's law. I could write K. So this is little bitty Q. Little bitty Q times big Q over R squared. There it is. But it's also, you can look at it this way. The force of little bitty Q times big Q is equal to little bitty Q times the E field that we've already, if the E field is given to you. Same thing. So there's two equations for the electric field. And this, we'll stop with this one. Two equations for the electric field. All right, there's E, which is this K, Q of a bunch of charge, or a point charge hooked together. We shrunk it down. We shrunk a bunch of charge down to a point times R squared. Or E is equal to the force that a test charge feels divided by that little test charge. And notice, what's the units for electric field? Well, what do we have here? Newtons per Coulomb. There it is. Oops, there it is. All right. 